Hi, I'm Joe James, and in this video, I'm going to explain what recursion is and how it works. And then I'm going to show you how to code a simple problem in Java using recursion. So let's start by showing an example. Find 5 factorial. Don't worry if you know, don't know what factorial is, I'm going to explain it right now. So it's written as 5 exclamation point. That's factorial. And what factorial is, is it's that number 5 times every number smaller than it. So 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. You just multiply all those numbers together. And as you multiply it all out, you get 120. Let's some notes here. 0 factorial is equal to 1. This is by definition. And 1 factorial is equal to 1. This is part of the definition of factorial. So with that in mind, let's find an algorithm to find the factorial for any number in factorial. So an iterative algorithm. Iterative just means looping. Okay? It just means looping, where you're going to use a loop. The computer goes through the loop and it calculates as it goes. So this is a simple looping function. This isn't code, this is just a, an algorithm. Function. Get factorial for number 5. Right? We're going to pass in an integer 5. We'll first set factorial equal to 1. This is going to be our running total. 4x equals 1 to 5, so that's a loop, a loop that runs from 1 to 5, or 1 to this number. And then we say factorial equals factorial times x. So in other words, we're going to multiply the numbers 1 through 5 times our running total factorial. And our running total starts at 1, and then we'll multiply it by 2, and then we'll multiply it by 3, we'll multiply it by 4, We'll multiply it by 5, and then we'll exit this loop. Factorial will equal 120 when we exit the loop. So that's an iterative algorithm that uses a simple for loop. Another way to do it is using recursion. So a recursion function breaks the problem down into smaller problems. And then it calls itself. It calls its own function. It calls the same function from the function that it's in to solve each of those smaller problems. And it also includes a base case, or a terminal case, and a recursive case. So in other words, depending on what value is passed in, it may return an answer, or it may call itself again. So let's look at the 5 factorial case here. 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And what we can see when we analyze that is, gee, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is actually equal to 4 factorial. So 5 factorial is equal to 5 times 4 factorial. So now when we break down 4 factorial, we could say, well, 4 factorial is equal to 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. But look, we could say this, 3 times 2 times 1, is equal to 3 factorial. So 4 factorial is equal to 4 times 3 factorial. And we can continue doing that until we get all the way down to one of our base cases. And then when we get down to 1 factorial, we say, well, well, 1 factorial is 1. So we return 1, and then we multiply that all out. Factorial really lends itself very nicely to using a recursive solution to solve the problem. Because it's really easy to break the problem down into smaller pieces by peeling off the highest number and passing in the next number to call the function again. So our recursive algorithm looks like this. We call get factorial on 5. The answer is 5 times get factorial of 4. We need to get the factorial of 4. So we call get factorial on 4. We pass in 4 as the argument. Well, get factorial of 4 is equal to 4 times get factorial of 3. So each time it's breaking the problem down one more step. And when we get down to the bottom, we say get factorial of 1. Well, we know what that is. That's 1. So we can return to 1 at this point. And then we work our way back up. We say, well, get factorial of 1 is equal to 1. And then at this point, we can say, well, 1 times 2 is equal to 2. So we pass that up. And then we, we, we say 3 times 2 is equal to 6. So we pass that 6 up. And we pass these up. And then when we get back up to 5 times factorial of 4, we get to uh, 120, which is our final answer. And then we can return the 120 to wherever the original function call came from. So in other words, we're digging our hole, ourselves deeper into a hole, and then we dig ourselves back out of it by computing our way out of it step by step. So we have all these open function calls as we get down into this. And then we close out the function calls when we get to our base case. 
So the recursive algorithm works like this. Function get factorial of n. If n is less than 2, in other words if it's 0 or 1, return 1. Otherwise, we're going to return n times get factorial of n minus 1. So this would be like 5 times get factorial of 4, right? That's it. That's how, that's how simple the get factorial recursive algorithm is. It's very, very simple. There's two lines of code. So recursion pros and cons. Typically, no calculations are done in a recursive solution until you reach that base case. And until then, you're opening up a whole bunch of recursive function calls, which can take up some memory. So if you have millions of pieces of data in your data set, you're opening a lot of function calls. And you could run out of memory that way. So that's one of the cons. So it does not really scale up like iteration does. It requires more memory. So in some very large problems, recursion may not be a good solution. And in many languages, iterative solutions are way faster, for loops. So some languages are just optimized for running for loops really fast, and they do that really well. But opening function calls, they do very slowly. And then another con is sometimes recursion is a little more abstract. It's harder to understand than iterative solutions in some cases. So wrapping your head around the solution sometimes can be harder in recursive solutions. But a pro is that in some cases it's extremely fast and easy to code. And it's extremely practical for tree traversals and binary search is where you find the, the leading applications for recursion where it just makes a lot of sense. It's just the best way to do it. Now let's take a look at our Java code. We have a class called Factorial with a capital F and we save this under the file name factorial.java, also with a capital F. It's important that the file name and the class name both match. And then within the class, we have a main method to instantiate a factorial object, which we use as a lowercase f, that's kind of the convention in Java. Factorial with lowercase factorial equals a new factorial object. And that enables us to use these methods of the factorial class. Our next statements are print factorial dot get recursive factorial for six and print factorial dot get iterative factorial using the looping method for six. So in both of them we pass in a six, we should get 720 back. And then we have two methods. We have the get recursive factorial, which receives an integer n, and it also re returns an integer. First it does a quick error check. If n is less than 0, in other words, n is a negative number, we don't know how to handle that. We don't know how to compute the factorial for a negative number, so we're just going to return a negative 1. And if n is less than 2, that's our base case. We test for our base case, and if n is 0 or 1, we return 1. And otherwise, it's the recursive case. So we return n times get recursive factorial for n minus 1. So the first time through the loop, it's going to be 6 times get recursive factorial for 5. So that's it. That's our get factorial function, the recursive method. Our iterative function uses a loop. So again, we receive an integer n, and we also return an integer, which is the calculated factorial. We have the same error check. If n is less than 0, we'll just return negative 1. Then we're going to initialize this factorial value to 1, which we're going to increment each time through the loop by a product of i. So we have a loop that runs from i equals 1 to i equals n, and each time through the loop we multiply our running factorial counter. We multiply it by i. So to multiply 1 times 1, and then the product of that times 2, the product of that times 3, and so on. And then it will return the final factorial product, fact. So that's our program. Let's try and run it. First we'll compile it, and we'll run our program. And we get 720 back for both methods. So that wraps up my video on recursion. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please give me the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.